Great to see you here again. My name is Luke de Custer, founder of the Custer Academy. And in this video, I'm going to talk about estimation. Estimating the effort and also what we call Fibonacci poker. It's very important to understand how are we going to measure the effort and the progress. And for that, we need to have a system how we can calculate. We're calculating some points that are completed during a sprint. And that's what we're going to do here. We're looking at different principles and the very popular method of what is called Fibonacci poker. But before we continue, don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. Let's have a look at estimating of effort and duration. Now, when we look at estimations, typically in the old way, we are looking at absolute um, estimations. We want to know a time, a duration of an activity, eventually also having some standard deviation, so we have some uncertainty in here. But basically the numbers are absolute, they're not relative. In Scrum we're going to make those estimates relative to the other activities. So we have activity A, we compare it with another activity, and we make those estimates basically relative a relative estimation, larger than, smaller than, but we try to put some value on there. There We can use, for example, the sizes from extra small to XXL or triple XL, and we see this, it's like t-shirts, we have activities extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, double X large, triple X large, and so on. So it's a, a relative estimation of the duration. Now, this is the principle. But what we're basically going to use is what we call an adjusted Fibonacci series. We use the same principle of relative estimation and we find the, or you may remember, the original Fibonacci series. Eh? It's one, one, two, three. So it's always the next item is the sum of the two previous ones. And we start with the two initial parameters. Parameter zero and one is one and one. Basically, this is one of the elements that we find in also computer programming. Fibonacci was very famous with the Da Vinci Code. It's very popular to use it, and it created a certain um, specific way of dealing with things. We also can find the golden ratio with this. A lot of mathematical things around the Fibonacci series. Now, what we have is we will have a modified Fibonacci series for Agile, typically for Scrum. We start with half, one, two, three, five, eight. We still have the series like it is, only the first one is a little bit different. We have 13, and here we take 20, 40, and 100. Now, what does it mean? We're going to give a certain value of the effort to these activities, the stories that we are going to do. Now, typically, we can execute stories up to an estimate of 13 in a sprint. If we have higher estimates, like 20, we will try to split it in different activities. For example, we can take 2, 3, and 5. 2, 3, 5, and 2 and 8 would also give 20. So, or we can have 5 and 8 and 13, and then we have 4, 2, uh, 2 times 2, or 3 and 1. We try to go back to estimates not exceeding 13. So basically, we have that effort. Once we're going through the process of the sprints, we will see how many of those points we can realize during a sprint. And that will describe the speed, the speed that we can use to estimate when the project will be finished. A very interesting way to do, but it's a little bit adjusted in um, Scrum because we're going to talk about Fibonacci poker. And Fibonacci poker is based on the Delphi principle. The Delphi principle is when you bring a group of people together and the people give an estimation about a problem to resolve. People represent their numbers, and the lowest and the highest number have to explain why they made that selection. Once they explain it, there is a second round, and we keep on doing the round until the numbers, the estimations are 
close enough to say, okay, now we have a solution. And we are going to do the same thing in Scrum. Now, every participant has a set of Fibonacci cards, the cards that we had before. We are going to use those cards to estimate. We share the story, and based on the story, the people will say, that's my estimate. That's the card that I give to this estimate. And there are two ways to look at it. When the range is two Fibonacci numbers, for example, here we have two, three, five, and five, then we say we have an estimate, which is the average is 3.75. When the range is more than two Fibonacci numbers, the high and the low card go into discussion. They explain why they have their estimates, why it's high, why it's low. And after the discussion, a new round starts until we find a result in the range of two Fibonacci numbers, which will be finally the estimate for that activity. Let's now have a look at the effort and Fibonacci and changes. Now, when we consider agile methods like Scrum and Kanban, typically Scrum, we estimate the effort using the system like we have the Fibonacci estimating. And we're looking at the estimation, the duration of the work, how long does it take to complete the effort. The product log has all the items that have to be created, including their effort estimates. So basically, we know for all the items, what their efforts will be. Now what happens? Based on the performance, we can estimate the speed and the cost. And when the uh, user or the customer wants to add some other items to the product log, we have to estimate the effort of those new items and then say, okay, we have to look at the product log. We have to reprioritize all those elements and we have to Take out, for example, we have a new uh, story which is worth 100 uh, points. We have to take out a total of 100 points to compensate for this. We adjust the priority. And that's basically the only thing that we are going to do here is changing that priority and finding out what we can do there. So this is the way we use those uh, Fibonacci estimates to manage our project to find how fast we are doing the project. And basically, all the items come together. We know when we have new items, when we reprioritize, we can tell the customer exactly what can be done and what cannot be done. So that was it for this video. Very important to understand how we do the estimation. Of course, before finishing, don't forget to click the subscribe button, click the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in our new videos. Thank you, and bye-bye.